Hello and welcome to Encore's weekly film show. I'm joined by our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Eve. And we're going to start with a French movie called The Deer Skin, which stars the only Frenchman to have ever won an Oscar for the artist Jean de Jardin. Tell us more. Ah, well, uh, director Quentin Dupieux makes movies that have the courage of their own absurdity. His collaboration here with actor Jean de Jardin is incredibly funny, a little bit scary, and admirably original. Du Jardin plays Georges, who spends an insane amount of money on buying secondhand the fringed suede jacket of the title. He forms a symbiotic relationship with his jacket to the point that he wants to eliminate all the other jackets on Earth. He launches a sort of personal jihad on jackets. Uh, he's helped in this challenging endeavor by the video camera the jacket seller threw in as a perk. Georges and his jacket uh, check into a crummy hotel in the mountain town, and Georges has a cash flow problem because his wife has blocked their joint account. George meets the bartender at the local watering hole, played by Adele Hanel, and she volunteers to edit the film he's supposedly shooting from these basic ingredients. Writer, director, cameraman, editor, and music composer, Quentin Dupieux fashions, fashions, get it, um, an outrageous black comedy. It sounds totally outrageous. Well, France 24 interviewed Jean de Jardin at Cannes, um, the film festival where the film premiered to great acclaim. He told us about his reaction when he first read the script. Before I read it, I'd actually met director Quentin Dupieux, who told me a bit about it. He said it was a story about a man who goes into the mountains to isolate himself with his deerskin jacket. It immediately spoke to me for many reasons. The whole masculine fantasy of fleeing, the desire to forget oneself somewhere else, insanity that creeps up on all of us, obsession too. Là, vous êtes en train de parler de mon blouson. Euh, non, non, non. Ok, pardon. Pourquoi on parlerait de ton blouson Non, c'est parce qu'en fait, on m'en parle tout le temps, quoi. Des fois, il y a des, des gens qui m'arrêtent dans la rue. Je suis habitué à ce que ça, ça attire les regards, c'est pour ça. Pardon. Ah, vraiment mmh. Mais ils vous arrêtent pour vous dire quoi, les gens je, 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 Vous voyez bien que c'est pas un, un vêtement banal. He really does have a very close relationship with his jacket, doesn't he? <laughs> he, he? He sure does. It's fair to say that they're inseparable. And the jacket is definitely a character in its own right. Uh, it doesn't speak or anything, but that doesn't stop George from talking to it. Judging by this and another film that premiered in Cannes, this business of a guy shacking up with an inanimate object may actually be a trend, at least in French comedies. Coming out soon is a French comedy called Eve, about a 30-something rap musician who forms a close personal relationship with, of all things, his refrigerator. It's a smart fridge. It looks after his diet. They even go skydiving together. I'm not making this up. <laughs> in the deerskin, Dupieux knows how to film the action so you're perpetually uneasy, but in a delicious way. Setting is sort of timeless, simultaneously contemporary and retro. The film only lasts an hour and 17 minutes, but what he accomplishes in that time frame is exceptional, and it's a comedy, but a violent one, and the musical score is excellent. This is a big year for Jean Dujardin, the show his range as an actor, isn't it? Absolutely. He co-stars in J'accuse, or An Officer and a Spy, Roman Polanski's upcoming fact-based film about the Dreyfus affair, playing the man who proved that Captain Alfred Dreyfus, convicted of treason and sentenced to life in prison, was innocent. The Dreyfus affair is as much of a watershed historical event in French history as, say, the Kennedy assassination is in the U.S. Personally, I am overjoyed that Polanski is the one recounting this story, and he has a superb cast, Louis Garel, Emmanuel Seigneur, and Matt Mathieu Almaric, in addition to Dujardin, to help him out. And the film will be out here in November, and it's rumored to be having its premiere at the Venice Film Festival. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, there are film directors whose names everyone knows, even if they haven't seen um, a movie by them. Pedro Almodovar is one of those directors, isn't he? I should certainly hope so, but if you're watching and you don't know what an Almodovar is, uh, he's an audacious Spanish storyteller, fond of bright colors and dark subtexts, who's had the great good fortune to work with outstanding Spanish actors, including Carmen Mora, Penelope Cruz, Victoria Abril, and Antonio Banderas. Starting this week, 19 restored Almodovar films are being re-released in one fell swoop. It would take roughly 38 hours to see all of them, but for the most part, it would be 38 hours well spent. Um, 
Alma Dovar has had films uh, in the Cannes co competition six times, but he's never actually won a big prize, has he? Uh, that's true, and many people thought they should root for him to finally win the Golden Palm this year with his semi-autobiographical Pain and Glory, which I like a lot. Uh, but prizes, you know, they reflect the taste of a given jury. They're not for posterity. They're not absolutes. This year, however, Antonio Banderas won the Best Actor Prize for his terrific turn playing the director's alter ego. Okay, and France 24 actually spoke to Antonio Banderas after the closing ceremony in Cannes last month. To find Almodovar in the character of Salvador Maggio was the biggest challenge. Uh, you know, uh, without doing something that looks like a pastiche, uh, I didn't want to do an imitation of him. I mean, in terms of maneuverism, it was just uh, I was just trying to create the character from the inside out. It has been probably the most interesting experience of my career by far. So 19 restored Almodovar films um, are coming out. Uh, which one would you choose? Oh, wow. Um, well, I like a lot of them, although Almodovar himself thinks it's one of his weaker films. I remain wowed by Matador from 1986 because the premise is so delectably perverse. A man and a woman embark on an intense relationship, which is complicated by the fact that uh, part of what attracts them to each other is that they both get off literally, on death. In the animal kingdom, if a black widow spider mates and then bites off her arachnid uh, sweetie's head, that cuts down on the possibilities for pillow talk. So we spend the film wondering whether they're going to go all the way, as it were, and couple their way into the arms of Morpheus. OK, well, let's take a look at Matador. <laughs> Very intriguing. Um, in August at the Venice Film Festival, Amadova will receive an honorary Golden Lion for his de uh, career. How did he get to this point? Ah, well, he's mostly self-taught as a filmmaker. He started out making Super 8 short films that he showed in bars and dives and anywhere they'd show them. Uh, before his career took off, he worked for the Spanish Telephone Company for 12 years. He and his theatrical friends made the most of the artistic flourishing in Madrid after Franco's death. He featured bold themes way ahead of the curve. Lots of sex, gay, straight, transgender, dangerous priests, offbeat nuns, prostitutes, rape, sadomasochism, you name it, kitsch and melodrama are frequent stylistic choices, but he also grew to excel at depicting uh, the longing of lost or thwarted romance. His 1988 comedy Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown with Rossi De Palma and Carmen Moro, among other fetchingly written roles for women, was an international hit. It's actually one of my least favorite of his films. After that, each of his movies became an event. Like many, a true auteur be before him, he continues to draw inspiration from his country and his language. You won't catch him defecting to Hollywood. And I really like All About My Mother, his complex tale from 1999, I can't believe it's been 20 years, which has the distinction of being the most awarded Spanish film ever made. Okay, so many Pedro Almodovar films to see, Lisa. <laughs> now, the Champs-Élysées Film Festival is on in Paris. What are you most looking forward to? Ah, well, the programming and the atmosphere, and also it's easy to find. It's on the Champs-Élysées. <laughs> the festival's stated mis mission is to highlight American independent film and French independent spirited film while paying tribute to actors and directors from both countries who've made their mark on the movies. I'm looking forward to James Franco's film The Pretenders. His 2017 movie The Disaster Artist was flat out brilliant and certainly should have been part of what they call the awards conversation, but it was shunted aside due to some unfortunate Me Too flack directed at Franco. This one has also had a hard time getting seen so far, so this is an opportunity. I'm looking forward to The Old Man and the Gun, starring Robert Redford as a gentleman thief, as well as Sissy Spacek, because it was directed by festival honoree David Lowry, who made the glorious A Ghost Story. Well, yesterday I actually interviewed Jeff Goldblum, who um, has a film at uh, the festival called The Mountain, and he is just totally divine. There are so many exciting things going on. The festival is also honouring Deborah Granick, Karl McLaughlin, and Christopher Walken, and up-and-coming indie directors. There are so many highlights on there. Uh, there are. Um, any master class uh, with someone like Christopher Walken sounds great to me. I guarantee you there'll be lines down the block. And in this case, the block happens to be what some still call the most beautiful avenue in the world. If you can't make it to Paris this year, 
year. Be advised that the French competition lineup will be shown in the U.S. on a tour that includes Chicago, Minneapolis, Austin, Portland, San Francisco, and L.A. And personally, I cannot wait to see the closing night film, Can You Ever Forgive Me?, with Richard E. Grant and Melissa McCarthy playing two real-life associates who get into forgery way over their heads. Okay, Lisa, thank you very much. We're going to leave you now with a glimpse of that, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. People are on alert. Your name's been put on a list. On a list? They're literary treasures, one of a kind. It's my writing. You're impersonating other people. Nobody's buying Lee Israel letters. There have been some forgeries going around. Do you think it's real? Looks that way. Good. You're stealing from me? Come on. Get out of my house! That's just supposed to be something more than this. We're probably looking at some time behind bars. What? I can't say that I regret any of my actions. In many ways, this has been the best time.